What's up you guys, welcome to today's video. So as you can tell by the title, I have a laid back crazy video for you guys today. And before anyone even says that I'm dry snitching or I'm telling you all the inmate secrets, trust me, all the cops already know, but we're gonna be talking about the top 10 places where inmates hide contraband. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a recovering addict who served time in prison and I will leave my entire life story it's crazy, in the description box down below. If you wanna follow me on any other social media platforms, it'll pop up on screen, maybe, maybe it won't, who knows. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started today. Do you want to know why everyone has trust issues in prison? It's because you can hide things everywhere. So the number one place where inmates hide contraband is in a body cavity. 1090 Jake did it first. Uh, so I can hide razor blades in my mouth. I can put them literally anywhere. But body cavity is the number one place where inmates hide stuff, whether that is drugs, tobacco, certain facilities allow smoking, certain facilities don't. It's a very common thing to have to put something in your purse, which is a female body cavity, or your suitcase is a male body cavity. It's just it's just a thing. If you want something bad enough, you want to keep contraband bad enough, that's what you're going to do. That's why when you go to prison, you have to do the strip search and squat and cough and they have to make sure there's nothing in your body cavity. And it's just the most uncomfortable process ever. Or if you have a visit, you go out to your visit, you have your visit, and then you have to get strip searched after your visit. Fun fact about me, I never had a visit in prison. I had a visit one time, but I turned it down and the only other visits I got was in county jail. But when I went to prison, never had a single visit for multiple reasons. In New York, the prison's hella far away from where you actually live. Arkansas, I didn't know a single soul, so many different reasons, but I never had a prison visit ever, not one time. So that's why I don't have pictures of me in prison because you get pictures done like in visitation and it costs money. You can get pictures taken of you in prison. You have to put in like a request for it to send home to your family and it just costs money. So if no one was coming to see me, we weren't getting a picture together, I didn't see the need. It wasn't a necessity is what I'm saying. And I didn't really want to remember those times. So number two, in any and all products such as this, you can hide a razor blade in your deodorant, anything that is pliable. So I'm not, I'm not trying to get stabbed today, but anything that you can mold, soap, deodorant, you can very easily take this. I'm not shoving it down far enough because it takes a little bit more time than what I'm willing to give. <laughs> I'm, I'm busy, I don't have inmate time, but you can hide a razor blade in your deodorant and you just have to remember that you put it there. A deodorant container is also a container. <laughs> I don't know. And you can pull out the deodorant. It's a smarter way of hiding things in a deodorant, if I can get it without breaking it. That's the key, is if you're going to change something, you have to make sure, one, that it doesn't rattle because if you put it back in here and they pick it up and it makes a sound, then they're going to know, say this is like a thing that I'm trying to hide from a correctional officer. I put it in here, put it in the, this thing of the deodorant, and then I seal it back up. You have to remember, inmates have all day, every day to think of ways to hide things. That doesn't really make a sound. but they will shake it. They'll pick it up and shake it to make sure that you have nothing in here. So as long as it doesn't make a sound, the cops come through your cell, they freaking trash it, they throw their mattress out, they rip apart things, they rip pictures, books. I've had a book completely torn apart by a CO before, but they're gonna pick it up. They're gonna make sure that it nothing rattles. Eh, it kind of does. So you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful with that. You have to tape it on the inside or find a clever way to make it not make that sound. because. Correctional officers know all these places, so you have to be very careful in how you hide them. Number three, food. This is actual prison coffee. You can buy it on Amazon, wouldn't recommend it. Three out of 10, you know, but it's super, super strong. And 
If something is open and a correctional officer is trying to find contraband in your cell, they will take the extra time to make sure that there is nothing in this bag. They will open it. They'll do, they'll do one of these and spill coffee everywhere, but they will, they will do anything they can. They'll, they have gloves usually. They'll go like this to make sure that it's just coffee. Literally anything that you can buy on commissary is something that you can hide things in. And because inmates have all day every single day, they're thinking of new ways to hide things. Food is definitely a very popular place to hide things, especially coffee. Coffee is just a high value item anyway, but it's just easy to hide things in here. And it's not overly messy. So that's why like coffee, maybe chips would be a good one. If the prison sells a peanut butter jar, you can put something in the peanut butter, spin it around. And what's gonna happen to the peanut butter is it's gonna kind of go to the top of the jar. So you can very easily hide anything in a peanut butter jar, but it's freaking messy. So, you know, pick your battles. You know what I mean? Another place that inmates hide contraband is in the day room. Now there are day room tables. There is a TV area. Sometimes there's like a microwave area. I never had a microwave in prison, so I learned how to cook things out of a chip bag with hot water, so good times. Reason number like 934 to not break the law. You have to cook things out of a chip bag, so just saying. But the day room, that way, if it is found, it's not technically your property. If it's in your cell, you're getting charged with it. If it's on your rack, if it's an open dorm, you're getting charged with it. So. A lot of people like to hide things in the day room, but that's super risky depending on what the contraband is. If it's just like a razor blade or a shank, uh, then hiding it in the day room, whatever. But if it's something that is a high dollar item, like drugs, tobacco, alcohol, I mean, if you're making the alcohol, then you don't want that in your cell, honestly, because that's a charge. But anyway, depending on the value of the item that you're trying to hide, you wouldn't want it in the day room. But if it's something as simple as a razor blade or something like that, then hiding it in a spot that's not technically your area would be fine. You can also hide razor blades in shoes, in the sole of your shoe. I have seen places that are like, are you serious? Like in my mouth or in the sole of my shoe. Again, inmates have all day, every day to think of new places to hide things. So I've seen razor blades, shanks come out of people's shoes before, which means they have to cut up the freaking shoe, like cut a hole in the shoe, either the bottom of the shoe or the side of the shoe. It just depends. It depends on what you're trying to hide and it depends on how large that item is. You can hide things in the binding of a book as well. So that's super easy to do with a razor blade because it kind of sticks there. But if you're trying to hide, say, heroin, and you get a wax bag of heroin, it's very small and it's very easy to conceal. It's easy to put in a book binding. It's easy to put in a body cavity or in deodorant. This is a very popular book in prison, 48 Laws of Power. I feel like all inmates have read it. Maybe not all, but I'm, yeah. So razor blade, book binding. I'm just gonna shove it in the book binding as far as I can. And I would do this with anything, pictures, whatever I was trying to hide. If it was small enough to fit in a book, I would put it in a book. So when the cops come through and they're looking for it, they do this a lot and that's not falling out because I shoved it in there pretty far. Oh God, where did I put it? See, I don't know. I don't know where I put it. If you had a cell with tons of books and commissary and a bunch of stuff, would you be able to find that razor blade? You're shaking the book, you're looking. It's not coming out. <laughs> it's not coming out. So, could you find it? Anything you could possibly think of, anything they sell in commissary is a hiding place. Another place where inmates hide things is in their mattress. Now, this is like, <laughs> I wouldn't say like the first place officers look because really the first place is like a strip search on your person would be the first place that correctional officers look. Mattress is a close second if they're searching your cell because it's the largest item in your cell and you can peel it apart very easily and slip something in there very easily. So they look for holes in the mattress. If they do find a hole in the mattress or they think that you've hid something there before, they will take the mattress and bring you a new one whenever they feel like it. Maybe it's the next day, maybe it's that evening. It just depends on how mad you made the officer. So 
facts. So they don't have to give you a mattress. And if you are hiding something in your mattress, they don't care. They don't care that you have to sleep on a concrete slab that night. Don't hide things in your mattress is how they respond to that. So I've definitely seen people not have a mattress for a day sometimes two days. It just depends on the officer and how mad you've made them. Another place that inmates can hide things is in their hair. I can very easily put my hair in a top knot bun and hide something in there. I can very easily have some kind of style of hair and hide whatever I wanna hide in there. You just learn how to hide whatever it is you want to hide. When I was serving time in Arkansas, we were only allowed five pictures. Not five pictures at once, five pictures ever. So I had to figure out a way to hide different pictures. I didn't get pictures of my daughter until she was like three months old, but every single picture that I got, I wanted to keep because obviously. So that particular prison would only allow five pictures ever. So if they caught you with more, sometimes I would write you up, sometimes they wouldn't, but they would almost always tell you to send it home and they would either make you send it home or they would take the pictures away. It was just a nightmare. So I was constantly trying to find different ways to hide my pictures. I would hide them in my legal mail and just hope that when my rack was getting searched, they wouldn't open my legal mail. I'd hide one in a book. I'd hide a couple in my prison journal, which I haven't read in a long time. Let me know if y'all want me to read that prison journal to you guys. It's kind of juicy. It's also a little, you know, angry because it was such a difficult time in my life, but I would have to scatter these pictures all over my locker so that they didn't find them, which is another reason to not break the law. <laughs> I know it's a lot more complicated than that, especially when we're talking about substance abuse disorder because over half of all incarcerated people are serving time on a nonviolent substance abuse charge. So, you know, just saying. When you have an item from commissary that has been opened, you could tell, like obviously I drank all this water, right? And it's been opened. It's very noticeable that I have consumed this product, opened this product, what have you. But if you have a water bottle that is not opened, the seal has not broken, then, it, then you wouldn't mess with it because the seal's not broken. So it doesn't look like I've done anything to this, right? Well, some prisons sell water bottles. I was never in a prison that sold water bottles, but you could very easily put a hole in the bottom of this, fill it up with vodka, hot glue the bottom of it, and give it to an inmate if you want to. Another correctional officer would come in to search the cell, see the seal is not broken, and move on. They wouldn't even open it. Now, I get questions almost every single day. How do inmates get drugs? How do inmates get cell phones? How do inmates get all of these things? The number one answer is correctional officers. And yes, I know there are some amazing correctional officers. I've actually had the privilege of meeting several really good correctional officers throughout my life, but correctional officers give inmates drugs. There is no debate, it is what happens. It happens at an alarming rate in every single prison that I have ever been to. Not just drugs, but any contraband that they want. That's a whole video for another time on how inmates pay correctional officers. It's a whole lifestyle. At the end of the day, we really need to start taking care of our correctional officers better. And I know a lot of people are like, what? Take care of correctional officers? Yes, they are underpaid. So bringing in some vodka that costs them $5 from the freaking bodega down the street and selling it for $100, that's a $95 profit. Of course they're gonna do that if they're struggling to pay their bills. We need to take care of our correctional officers. A $5 pack of cigarettes is $150 in prison, it depends. When you make something illegal, the demand skyrockets and therefore the price skyrockets. So prison is one of the most secured places in this country, right? Is a maximum security prison? How are they getting drugs in? Correctional officers. Other ways are visitors and mail, but the number one way in my personal experience is correctional officers. So I think that we need to pay them more. We need to train them better. We need to understand that they're human beings as well. And taking care of them should be our top priority so they don't fall victim to inmate manipulation and bringing in vodka or drugs to the inmates just to pay their bills. Because at the end of the day, that's really what that's about. It's about not paying correction officers enough because if you were paying them enough, they wouldn't feel the need to do that. There are different circumstances for every single thing. Maybe a correction officer fell in love with an inmate. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm specifically talking about money in this instance. All right, I'm gonna end today's video here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this laid back video. If you wanna see more videos like this, please let me know in the comment section down below. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay sober, whatever that looks like to you. There's no wrong way to recover. 
and I will see you in my next one. And I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> my hidden talent is forgetting what I'm saying while I'm saying it. So, I mean, not to brag. There was no, it wasn't a, a bruh.